what? influence that that figure that vessel holds to carry forward like let me pose a question to you do you think that drake is a culture vote culture vulture would you say that he's a culture vulture after seeing that snl video that he like this uh, sketch that he did uh, a couple of years ago um i would say Okay, because I've got it depending on what you and I've actually, you know another. what I've written a piece about culture vulture. Yeah. So, what what is your definition of a culture vulture? I mean, personally, in this in the topic of Drake, yeah, for you, Drake is the culture. So. Yeah, that's what I was going <laughs> to so, say. So, what, so what the hell is he vulturing? Whatever on? he vultures <coughs> on is going to like, be anything like he takes cult, on. Like he, unfortunately, like because he has been the number one streamed artist for the last couple of years now like and it like it doesn't seem like anyone's gonna knock him um like he can kind of he he's got to this level where he can basically if he said if he decides he wants to do a grime track he's gonna do a grime track it's not because he's culturally appropriating anything or a vulture or anything like he can but, 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 he can just do every once like or and and also it's just more the thing like and i think maybe it's like more people will look into the the, the genre of grime yeah. because he's now saying that i'm doing this grime track with this grime artist or i'm yeah. working with like because he brought on like georgia smith on his album like, like the he the did, level. Do you know? Yeah, what? I had the levels. The le- do you know what I mean? And it, it's the connections that he's made within the industry in the UK scene that's made like brought a, a bigger shadow or bigger light on the UK scene because over the last couple of years, yeah, I can only go from my personal opinion. Like maybe about five years ago, I used to only mainly listen to US music, and that was only because I felt like they were actually saying something and doing and like doing something different but now like the industry is kind of saturated where like we're now listening i listen to more maybe a mixture of uk and us because the uk scene has changed it's less like this whole like grimy just that because like back in the day that that was all the uk scene mainly was it's just grime and like not so do you think like there's a phase Coming not to an end, that sounds silly, but like he's entering a new, he's actually about to launch something. Yeah. With something like an article like this. I, I reckon. And a man that's not been on the scene. I reckon he's, uh, he's about, yeah, he's. Or is he coming across like now I'm becoming more like a businessman? I think he's doing that anyway. He was doing it from the beginning. Like that, I think that was always his plan. He was, he was an actor and then like he's then branched off into the music scene and he's also gone back into the acting. He's now he's done like producing and stuff like that. He's he's a, a a creative person. He's a performer, I believe. So like, and I, I th- all right, I'll tell you why. Yeah, I asked you like, what do you think about in terms of culture vulture? And actually, you nailed it because in that SNL skit that I'm talking about, he actually like puts in himself on in one of the scenes as like where's his like Jewishness, like extra extra yeah, yeah, curly yeah, yeah. hair and whatnot. And he goes on about it, and then he does that entire video of basically acting like Oprah, like you can have free tuition, free tuition, free tuition fee. And then you see like songs like even started from the bottom, now we're here. In terms of the people that were listening to him, and in terms of the, the people that charged after what he came up with, we have to understand that that was actually positive influence that he brought on. Yeah. Even me, we, you actually got me to watch this Meek Mill's documentary. Yeah, and yeah, then the yeah. way he charged back at Meek Mill, it wasn't to say, oh, I'm trashing you for, you know, the comment that you made while, you know, you were going through your down phase or whatever it was and your low tides. But don't charge at me like this because he did come out with a banger and that banger like just completely slayed to some extent what Meek Mill completely like, but, understood but yeah. so, and then culture vulture right now because in the article he does look at his canadian ship drake drake is canada in terms of that music yeah. period and canada literally says we are drake and do you think that's culture vulture there but to do you some think extent. maybe just the i, but I just, agree with it maybe kind of the thought of that canada is still kind of their queen our queen is their queen like because canada and Britain are so close in a sense still kind of connected maybe that kind of 
that link kind of strengthens things as well more. I, well, what does it strengthen? I don't know, the connection that he has, the, the reach. The reach he has, yeah. yeah. Inputs, I'm, like, I'm not going to lie, if these people do end up move towards things like grime industry, like, I think the reach is here. But I mean, like, for like no other US star yeah. has ever made that kind of reach over to the UK scene as Drake has. True. And, and, and like I think that's kind of crazy hip hop has been around for so long UK have been doing their scene the US have been doing their scene and it's just been separate and then Drake came along and he was just like yo I like what you guys are doing and I like what you guys are doing why don't we just fuse this and then and uh, I mean I dislike him in the sense that he the, some tracks he steals or he doesn't write or he has yeah. ghost writers but then I've come to learn that maybe it's because uh, and this is silly things like maybe the studio that he or the uh, or the record label that he is with they own the rights to a certain song that he's recording so okay. because they own the rights to it that means that he can then reuse that song because the record label that yeah. he's a part of owns this song so now that's their song that he's now re-recording and he can then re-record it as I guess whatever he wants yeah he can rela- re-enable it it's kind of like oh, i can't remember what it's called um but there's a certain term for this kind of repurposing kind of of things but uh, i don't know the one that really got me is where i listened to i get lonely too by drake which is word for word fan mail by tlc and i only i only, I only clocked it when i was it's not li- even in my head i'm trying to remember you can just uh, fan mail. Uh, Let's just, just imagine. Just like you, I get lonely too. That's like the Drake song, and that's what they. That's what you sing. That's what they sing uh, on the TLC song. But it goes ah, uh, fan mail is in the background. Um, but like I only clocked it because like I was doing DJing it, and I was listening to the song. I was like, this song sounds hella familiar. So then I I I, I got I ripped up the original song and yeah. I played them like cuz basically I get lonely too is literally just a slowed down version of fan mail. Fan mail's a bit faster, I'll beat a bit more. So I slowed down fan mail a bit and I played them next to each other word for word. Just yeah. word for word and I was just like, yo, like Drake has just literally Was there any mention of it anywhere that it was con- oh wow. No. The the song is released as I Get Lonely Too by Drake. And everyone... People will listen to that song and think, oh, Drake wrote this. Yeah. Mo-. Yeah, that reminds me of that movie yesterday. <coughs> you know what if I mean? If the guy didn't have the consciousness yeah. to think that if these people noticed who I was. Yeah. And they... Oh, damn. And that's what I mean. And it's like... And if you listen to any of Drake's... Some, some of Drake's older stuff, he's done it again with previous songs where, like, I was really into, like, the samples of where certain songs were used and what why how much of a sample they've used for um for production reasons because like they say that when you when people sample songs usually you hear what the song is if you listen to the chorus you'll hear like kind of the melody is more of what the actual song is that they sampled so like or you just lit it's interesting maybe they just sampled us maybe just a drum from a certain song or like maybe it's just, just a certain pattern and I listened to one song by Drake. I can't remember what it was. But then I was listening to the original song. <laughs> and I listened to the... And I was like, hang on. But that's what Drake says in his in his chorus. But this is word for word from... i got to listen <laughs> to this with TLC, man. <laughs> and, I was, and I was just like, what? And then I was, I was clocking this all in uni. And I was just like, yo, but Drake is like dope. But I can't really... Th- believe that he's actually written everything that's out there so like i've always taken anything that drake has released as kind of like yeah so when those allegations came out that he did i was like ah, i thought this for a while like he this i used to think that already do you know why because do you know what was it i i don't know if this this was an accusation about little wayne that was made or not that he doesn't write his lyrics all oh of little them. wayne does yeah and when that charge i remember little wayne was clearing of himself or whatever and around that time, like, I think there was the whole... What's his group called that he had back in the days? Um, uh, Young Money. Young Money, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then after that phase in the sixth form, when I started hearing Drake and the people that were listening to it, I was like, 
is this man writing his own lyrics? I was like, I'm hearing these, this, the interviews of this guy and I was like, is he writing his own lyrics? And then I never questioned it because I was like, all right, not exactly my fully kind of music, but everyone hears it and I've got, literally, it's on everywhere. And now you look back at it and then Mick Mill made the accusation and then you think cool. about it. But you know what? The point I was going to make was his character and his personality makes it look like maybe if he had a helper or whatever, we don't know. But it looks like the lyrics are his. Like yeah, his he makes personality it, he makes fully it his fits own. Yeah, in. Of yeah. Course. But like this idea of... And that gives me hope for something like what he's, this canopy growth project yeah. that he's doing, you know. I wish him all the luck of it because I want to see what he's going to come out with, what product. Has he specifically know? mentioned in the article in the UK article, by any chance? It doesn't. It just says that obviously he is working closely with the Canopy Growth Corporation CEO, Mark Zecklin. Zecklin? I hope I said that name right. And he has said that uh, the company was inspired by Drake's vision in bringing the best in... uh, bringing the best in class marijuana across the world. I feel like all these guys have really recently had a zen moment in the background, you know, I'm not going to lie. So, so basically, bringing world-class cannabis or marijuana and spreading it, making it more yeah. uh, affluently around yeah. the world. Um, affluently available, that's the word I was looking for. Um, but yeah, it just says, Drake's prospects as a cultural leader and entrepreneur combined with canopy, canopy growth's broaden broad but uh bread bread if what bread if let's see oh wait let's see drake's per drake's this, perspective as a culture leader and entrepreneur combined word, yeah. with canopy growth's breadth of cannabis knowledge will oh, allow that how, that our how, new year company to bring oh, an how you spell yeah oh. no nah, dude that oh. is one of the ways apparently oh like it's uh, that looks like bread th yeah like i i never get it like some, oh so it's breath okay. dude in my exams i used to write it with an e so no one caught up okay but then lose no marks i so thought it was cool. an e at the end oh okay breath. i'm gonna check that you know just in case I, i'm about to make a stupid uh, breath point. of cannabis knowledge will allow our new company to bring an unmatched cannabis ex- cannabis experience to the global market he states okay okay I mean, it's an exciting vision. It's an exciting dream, um, and this is the company is. All, it's not the first time the company has done partnerships with celebrities. Yeah, they've, they've also teamed up with uh, Snoop Dogg and his close friend Martha Stewart. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. As well as uh, I Seth always Rogen. love seeing them together. I know, oh. right? Their cook show is dope. They're, they're beautiful. I watched a few episodes. You know, yeah. I really, really did. Yeah. I mean, I didn't see... A, po- a part of me was like, damn, there's too much bands. Like, I don't see the point of this, but, like, it's actually really, really jokes. I was literally just saying this. Oh, in relation to breath. So, like, do you know how we say breath is, like, we take a breath and all that stuff? Or, like, a breath of fresh air. It, when it's got a D in it, it's actually referring to, like, the, the distance in terms of how much scale and projection he wants to have. So, a breath of scale in um, terms of... Yeah, that's okay. it. So, remember we were watching uh, Yesterday the Other Day? Yes, Yesterday the Other Day. Watch Yesterday the Other Day. And what's his name? Now a day we've gone away. uh, The the greatest uh, singer that we have seen since uh, Beethoven. Yes, (laughs) yes. (laughs) Mr. Ed Sheeran. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, man, I'm... It sounds funny if you're listening to this back, but if you watch <laughs> yesterday, yeah, that's how he's painted out. Like literally, <laughs> literally. Do you know what? I'm, I'm, a, I'm gonna just drop one, two, two names here, yeah. Mozart, and yeah, so Amadeo Mozart and Sai Larry. <laughs> Legit. If you got this reference, yeah, like Ed Sheeran plays the funniest skit oh, in this shit. entire like movie. <sighs> So, like, going on from what I was saying, funnily, about how Drake has been the most streamed uh, um, artist. Mm. So, this article reads, and this article is from today, or, yeah, from today. uh, Drake is crowned Spotify's most streamed artist of the decade as Ed Sheeran gets the most streamed song. Damn. So... It's nearly the end of it. So for the last 10 years, Drake has been the most streamed artist. artist. Can can we put this into like 
quantum things like that's that, effed up in it that's 